So you are pretty sure that you want to try fasting. You're convinced you want to give it a go because some of the fat off you, but you're pretty sure also that your doctor is going to tell you not to do it. And you're probably right. So what do you do? That's what this video is about. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kristen. This is Primal Weight Loss. I lost about half my body weight eating mostly animal foods and doing a lot of fasting. And in my videos, I try to tell you how to do it because um, I want everyone to do it and then we'll beat the obesity epidemic and we'll live happily ever after, frolicking in the meadows. That's the idea. So welcome. Disclaimer, I am not a healthcare professional, nor do I wish to be one. Any activities that you undertake are undertaken at your own risk. I'm sharing my opinions and my experience. Do with it as you will. So you want to fast, you're good to go, but maybe you just want your doctor's like seal of approval, or maybe you want to be able to like check your blood work before you start and while you're doing it, which is a great idea. But you're pretty sure that your doctor's going to be like, what? You're insane. You're going to do rolling 72s. What the hell is that? You're going to die, etc." You're probably right. Your doctor's probably going to be hostile, but I'm going to give you four options that you have. If your doctor is not into it, you have four options. Keep watching and I'm going to tell you what they are. But before I do that, I want to explain to you why your doctor might not be cool with fasting. Let me take you back to the halcyon days when heart attacks were not really a thing. And then all of a sudden they were, and there was this doctor and his name was Ansel Keys. He was super duper important, like pretty much the whole food pyramid and everything that you think you know about nutrition is because of Ansel Keys. Because Ansel Keys was a physician and he had this idea that the reason why everybody was getting heart attacks is because their arteries were clogged with cholesterol and they were getting clogged with cholesterol because people were eating fat. They were eating saturated fat. And so he spent a lot of time and a lot of energy and he had a shit ton of influence in industry and government. And he pretty much convinced everybody that it's called the diet heart hypothesis, basically that everyone was having heart attacks and, you know, uh, dying of heart disease because they had saturated fat in their diets. And he believed that saturated fat, that fat in your diet led to fat on your body. And he said, we have to quit eating animal fats. And so industry responded when, when all, everybody was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Cause it does make sense. I mean, it does make sense. I was just telling somebody in there, like I was telling my stepdad, I was like, because he's lost like, I don't know, 40 or 50 pounds, like with me helping him do keto and like intermittent fasting and 24s. And he was asking me questions and I was, you know, reminding him like the more fat you eat, the better, like the more fat you eat, the more saturated fat. I was like, eat bacon, eat spam, eat cream cheese, and the fat will just fall right off you. And my brother was listening and my brother was like, that just does not sound right. And he was like, I know it is, but it just doesn't. And it does seem counterintuitive that eating fat would keep you from getting fat and would keep your heart healthy. But it's permeated the culture that fat is bad for your heart, that it makes you fat, etc. So when everybody started freaking out about saturated fat, industry responded by taking the fat out of food and replacing it with sugar, carbohydrate. Because like, okay, let's take yogurt, for example. It's just one example, but I could give you a million examples. You take all the fat out of yogurt and it tastes like shit. You have to put something in it to make it taste better. And there's only three macros. There's protein, there's fat, and there's carbohydrate. Well, it's already got the protein in there. So they would just cram some more sugar in it, right? That's why all those, I remember when I was a kid and my mom was always eating, doing the low fat thing. It was all the craze, like 80s and 90s, everyone was doing low fat. And I wondered why I kept getting fatter because, you know, I was doing slim fast. I was drinking the slim fast meal replacement shakes and there's like no fat in them. There's a ton of sugar. I was eating Yoplait light yogurt with it's fat free, but there's a ton of sugar, which is why it's freaking delicious. We believed in this paradigm for a long, long time. But if you look at what has happened, obesity and all related disorders, diseases, and conditions, all the major causes of death have just gotten worse. Like all the major causes of death in the United States, at least are related to obesity and directly related to hyperinsulinemia. We'll get to that in a minute. So the same thing that causes the obesity, which is hyperinsulinemia, high insulin state all the time. Diabetes type two is just like 
late stage insulin resistance. You obviously have obesity, you have PCOS and other um, female fertility disorders that are directly related to insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. All these things are caused by our high carb diets and the fact that eating these carbs that we stuffed into our food, we took the fat out because it's unhealthy, remember? We replaced all of the good, healthy, saturated animal fats that we evolved eating for hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of years with a bunch of shit that had never existed like seed oils and refined sugar. Everybody's like, sugar is natural. Okay, we are not chewing on sugar cane, all right? Like grow some sugar cane and make a bag of white sugar. Like I'll watch. It's not natural, it's made in a fucking factory. So we took all the healthy saturated fats out of our food. We stuffed a bunch of sugar and seed oils in and uh, we got really fat and we got really sick. And look around, we are really fat and sick. The other thing that it does is it puts us on this like blood sugar roller coaster where we feel hungry every few hours. There's a lot of things that go into that. The main one just being that our blood sugar is constantly shooting up and crashing and shooting up and crashing. The other thing is a lot of us are fat and therefore leptin resistant. Leptin is the hormone that tells your brain you're full. And when you become leptin resistant, you never feel full. I was hungry for like 32 years. I was fat and hungry like forever. So if you're fat and hungry all the time, there's a reason for that. It's a chemical in your brain called leptin and your brain doesn't listen to it anymore. You know how when your kid says mom like 26 times in a row and after a while you just kind of stop hearing it or like your kid is watching some really annoying thing and you just kind of tune it out. That's what your brain does to leptin. That's also what your cells do to insulin. That's why you end up with all of this insulin just like bouncing around in your body wreaking havoc. This state is called hyperinsulinemia. So here's the thing about insulin and here's where I'm getting to. Fasting makes your insulin drop to nothing, okay? It's a unique physiological state. It's not the same. It's, a lot of people think that fasting is just like cutting calories but extra, but it's actually a unique physiological state when your insulin is at zero. You can't burn fat if you've got insulin bouncing around. Insulin inhibits fat lipolysis. So when you drop your insulin by fasting, your body's able to burn fat. In the 60s and 70s, there were like there was like kind of a fasting craze. It was sort of part of like the new age thing. And they were doing like medical ethics were not quite where they are today. And there were crazy studies of like normal sized people getting water fasted for 60 days. And over time, this kind of like fell out of favor and a lot of especially older doctors when they hear fasting, they think back on that and they think of it as something like sort of punitive, like punishing and really extreme. The other problem is that we've all been on this glucose metabolism, blood sugar roller coaster because of all the carbs in our diet that we've been told you need to eat five small meals a day. And for most of us, if we don't do that, we feel like crap, but that's because our blood sugar is going up and down. So your doctor is hearing that and probably experiencing that for herself as well. So she's gonna tell you, oh no, you need to eat often and keep your blood sugar up. Here's the thing about your doctor. Your doctor quite possibly went into medicine to help people and your doctor might be really amazing at certain aspects of health and wellness. Like maybe she's an excellent diagnostician or maybe like, he's a fantastic surgeon and he's just the guy you want if you accidentally like cut your hand off with a machete to reattach your hand and he's like the bomb for that which is great and if i were to like cut my hand off with a machete or get tuberculosis or something i would defo go to a doctor but here is a simple fact doctors your typical physician treating patients right now in the western world knows jack shit about nutrition and when you find the fasting and carnivore and keto doctors who have published best-selling books and they're on Twitter and they figured all this out, not a single one of them learned this stuff in medical school. They learned nothing in medical school except, oh, the food pyramid, eat a balanced diet, get on the treadmill. This advice that they've been given that has just kept being given as the obesity rate just soars and continues to soar. And everybody's like, well, must be the patients, people aren't complying. But the data shows that actually we eat a lot less saturated fat. We've complied. 
we eat more healthy green leafy vegetables and we eat our five fruits and vegetables a day and we eat healthy carbohydrates and we do what we're told. By and large, we actually do what we're told and we work out way more than we did back in the day. We go to the Jillica gym memberships skyrocketing, right? Home workouts and beach body and all that stuff. Nobody knew what beach body was in 1956, okay? But we keep getting fat. And the doctors seem to just assume it's our fault, you know? I actually went to a doctor when I was about, I guess I was in my early 30s and I was doing the vegan thing because I was just trying yet another thing to lose weight. I was like, surely vegans are skinny. I'll get skinny doing the vegan thing. And I had been, I was vegetarian for like a long time, like a year. And then I was like, well, that's not working. So I became raw, uh, raw, no, I became vegan and that wasn't working. So I went raw vegan. I did that for four months and then I got off it for a bit and then I did it again for six months. So a total of 10 months and I still didn't lose any weight. And I was hungry all the time and I had gas all the time and I felt like shit and my teeth were starting to get bad, which I'd never had teeth problems. I went to my doctor, she was just a doctor. And I was like, so why am I not losing weight? You know? And she's like, well, what are you eating? And I told her, you know, salad, fruit, a lot of fruit. There's like no fat in that and it's healthy, right? And she was like, well, um, are you eating nuts? I was like, yeah, I eat like probably a quarter to a half a cup of nuts a day. And she was like, well, there it is. That's a lot of fat. I was raw vegan and I was told that I wasn't losing weight because there was too much fat in my half a cup of nuts. That is what we are up against. It's ignorance. She meant well, she didn't know what she was talking about. So she made her best guess because based on what she was told, that could have been the only thing in my diet that was making me fat because everything was perfect. I was raw freaking vegan. How could I possibly gain weight? Well, now you know it's because my insulin was sky freaking high because I was spiking it constantly. I was eating constantly because I was constantly getting carbohydrate and sugar from fruit and vegetables. And so my insulin was constantly shooting up and I was, and that meant I couldn't burn any fat. How the hell am I gonna burn fat? My insulin is sky high all the time. The doctors who are keto and low carb and they're in the nutrition space um, on Twitter and places like that, I think Twitter's the biggest place. A lot of them talk really honestly about this and how little they knew and how they used to give this advice forever and ever. And they just assumed that their patients weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And then some of them, either heard about someone else doing keto and tried it on their patients and saw it worked. A few of them actually started to get fat themselves. And they're like, oh, I'm getting older. I better eat less, move more. And then they realized it really wasn't working for them. And that's when they were like, oh shit, right? Any honest doctor will tell you that they're not taught anything about nutrition in medical school. They're getting the same information that we get just from the mainstream culture, which is, you know, eat less, move more, food pyramid, five a day, um, healthy carbs and keto is dangerous and fasting is dangerous and all that is super extreme and carnivore is a fad diet and it's all dangerous and don't do it and it's bad. So odds are really good. If you just pick a random doctor that is, think about it, they don't have time to keep up with the latest nutrition science, even assuming they're reading good science because a lot of nutrition science is a dumpster fire. But let's assume that they, they do want to keep up with it. When are they going to do that? The average like general practitioner sees a patient every 15 minutes. So when are they supposed to have time to keep up with it? They don't. So a lot of times you're going to like pick a random doctor and you're going to go in and be like, I like to try fasting. And they're going to be like, that's dangerous. You don't need to do that. I got extremely lucky because I was at a crisis point in my health and I already knew a lot about nutrition. I'd done carnivore for years and I knew all about keto and low carb, but I had fallen off the wagon. I was in really, really bad shape, postpartum depression, hypertension, um, severe, severe, like borderline suicidal depression. And um, my blood pressure was like really, really dangerous. And I picked a doctor at random who took my insurance and was near me. And he happened to be a keto and fasting doctor. And that's what he recommended to me. And I hopped right into it. And I actually ended up going way harder than he recommended because that's what I do. And I found the snake diet and I was just, I just took off, right? but I got lucky and you might not get lucky. Let's assume that you are talking to your doctor about fasting 
you, you walk in and you say, hey, you know, I really need to get this weight off. I really need to get healthy. I really need to make sure that I don't have a 20 or 40 year decline of chronic disease because it's not natural. I just really want to, you know, improve my blood work and get this fat off of me so I can live a long, healthy life and look good and feel good. And your doctor says, that's a great idea, but fasting is dangerous, keto is dangerous, etc. What do you do? I'm going to give you four options right now, four different things that you can choose from that you can do when your doctor says, if your doctor says, I don't think you should do fasting. Option number one, listen to your doctor. That's certainly an option that a lot of people choose and you might be leaning toward it because you're like, look, they have a medical degree and I don't. Surely they know more about this than me. I feel like I've already made the argument that they might not know more about this than you. However, I would also just like to add that I've had some doctors who helped me and were great in a lot of ways, but I don't think I've ever had a doctor until this last one who knew anything about insulin, insulin resistance, or hyperinsulinemia. And what that meant was I had to take matters into my own hands and heal myself. And I truly believe if I had not found carnivore when I was 28, 29, and had that period that lasted 18 months, I don't know that I would be alive today. That's the kind of that's the kind of trajectory that I was on. It's up to you if you want to just kind of ignore what I'm saying and listen to your doctor. I'm not gonna tell you not to do that, but I'm just gonna tell you that the truth is that ignoring my doctors at times has probably saved my life. Just putting it out there. Number two, try to change their mind. This is actually a pretty good idea, I think, because, you know, a lot of people get into medicine because they're curious and about the human body and biology. So you might be able to present them with some information that will make them think differently about fasting. Yeah, they're busy people, but if they just have to click on a link, I think it's worth a try. And the thing about this, the reason I think it's at least worth trying is because think about it. If you change that doctor's mind and they start recommending lower carb diets and fasting protocols to their patients, think about how many people that you will have helped. And that's why what Primal Weight Loss would like to do in the future is go directly to healthcare providers because I can reach out to all of you all day long, which I love doing, but if I can change one doctor's mind, think about the impact that I can make because people really, I mean, when they're in a health crisis, they generally don't go to YouTube, they go to their doctor. If they're going to their doctor and that doctor is telling them, you need to try fasting, you need to cut your carbs, that's a huge impact right there. So what I would like to do soon is make a video that you can send to your doctor so they can click on it and I can talk directly to them and say, hey, you have a patient who really wants to fast and you might not be into it, but here's why you should listen to them and listen to me. That's a video that I wanna make soon. So if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and click the little bell thingy and turn on notifications so that you know when my new videos are coming out because I'm super excited about making that video soon. Meanwhile, because it doesn't exist yet, in the description box below, I put some links that you can share with your physician. Um, I've also put links to a couple of books if you are just like, yo, I'm just gonna buy the big fat surprise for my doctor. I mean, why not? The, the fact that you actually went out of your way to be like, here's an entire book, might just be like, wow, damn, they really mean this. And I highly recommend that you read it first because it's amazing. But the Big Fat Surprise is kind of the story of, you know, Ansel Keys and the Food Pyramid and all the things I just was talking about where we got convinced that fat was bad. There's another great book called um, Why We Get Fat by Gary Taubes. So The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teichold and Why We Get Fat by Gary Taubes. I'll link them below. And I'll also add, I don't know what I'm gonna put down there, articles, videos, whatever I think that your doctor might actually look at or listen to that would appeal to them. Um, so, you know, send them that, talk to them about it, be like, hey, watch this, and just give it a try. Why not? You might change their mind, and if you do change their mind, you're helping a lot of people. Option number three, uh, ignore them and do it anyway. Um, again, I can't recommend this option because I don't wanna go to prison. <laughs> but like, and I, by the way, I'm not telling you like, I'm not, I'm not telling you ignore your doctor. I'm telling you what I have done. And I'm telling you that there are times, in my opinion, where doing the opposite of your doctor's advice can be valid because 
They're giving you advice that is making you worse. And I actually think that happens a lot. And I've had a lot of people come to me who have severe diabetes and their doctor is telling them to eat a diet that's 50% carbohydrate and they're insulin dependent and getting worse. And honestly, to me, I just can't in good conscience not recommend that a person in that situation ignores their doctor. And at this point, I really think that if you are, if you are a doctor treating diabetics, there's no excuse not to know how harmful that is. And honestly, diabetes is so rampant that all doctors are treating diabetics. So truly, truly, I think that ignoring your doctor's advice about nutrition is really not a bad idea. So if you decide to go this route, I did it many a time. And it's the, probably the reason I'm still standing here right now. Option number four, find a different doctor. So this is a really valid option. And I actually think that a lot of you will end up doing this. I wish that there were some kind of like online resource where you could look up doctors in your area that were, are keto and fasting friendly. As a matter of fact, someone needs to come up with that if they haven't yet. Um, I'm actually going to look for one. And if it exists, I will put it in the comments or the description box. So look for that um, and try to find a doctor in your area. Um, you can also use Google reviews, use keyword searches in those reviews, use word of mouth, talk to your friends nearby you. Um, hey, what does your doctor recommend that you eat? Hey, do you ever talk to them about keto? Um, stay away from fat doctors because <laughs> they don't know, right? They don't know anything about nutrition. They're fat. So stay away from the fat doctors. Um, and if your doctor is, you know, not fasting friendly, I would say like, try to change their mind. And if you can't, then move on. I mean, you have a lot of options. I hope, I hope, I mean, come to think of it, I shouldn't say that because some of you may be in a position where you don't have a lot of options, in which case you really might just have to make the difficult decision to go it on your own. But even if you make the decision to fast without your doctor's approval, I would say keep going back to them and getting your blood work checked because even if they're, they don't like that you're fasting, they're gonna wanna know what's going on with you. And that's really important information to have. I hope this video has been helpful. Um, I really think that this is an important subject because it is important to um, monitor your blood work and your health conditions as you're fasting. And so you want a doctor that's on your team. If you don't have a doctor that's on your team, you should either try to get her on your team or find a new one. That's my opinion. So thank you again for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe if you got value from this. If you want to join my squad, we're doing back-to-back -back rolling 72s right now. It is free to all my Patreon subscribers. That's patreon.com slash primal weight loss. That link is in the description box below. I'm on Twitter at Fast Carnivore. I am on Instagram at Carnivore Kristen. And I'm actually about to start a Twitch live stream. And my handle on there is Fast Carnivore. So, um... Follow me on Twitch, I guess. I haven't played a video game since Super Mario brought like Super Super Mario World in like 1995. Um, so it's probably going to be hilarious. I think I'm gonna be playing The Last of Us on PS5, so I don't even know how to hold the controller. It should be interesting. Anyway, thank you again for watching and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.